Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, what I want to do is I want to address a recent CBS News Health Watch article that kind of was recently um, came out last week, and I also shared this on my social channels. What I wanted to do is I want to link the article below in the video, and the title of the article is actually quite alarming, and that's why I want to share it with you. It says, dentists are pulling healthy and treatable teeth to profit from implants, experts warn. That's pretty daunting. For those of you who may not get a chance to read it, I'll summarize the article, the four main points that it tries to make, each of which actually raises important questions about where our profession is heading. Number one, overuse of implants. So the article essentially reveals that implants, although they're really uh, uh, life-changing for many patients with unsalvageable teeth, are often overprescribed. Many dentists are seeing cases where patients are recommended for full arch implant replacement of natural teeth teeth, despite the fact that these teeth are very treatable and savable. Sometimes even healthy teeth uh, are removed, and that obviously is very concerning. Two, misconception about implant superiority. So there is a common belief that implants are superior to natural teeth. However, uh, Implants, you know, really uh, come with their own maintenance requirements and also the risk of infections, which can lead to faster failure rate than would expect with natural teeth. Three, influence of private equity in implant dentistry. Now, of all these, this is really interesting. Many large dental chains have recently been uh, buying out dental practices through private equity firms, uh, sparking new concerns over profit-driven practices and also a potential for overtreatment. And that is a real concern. Four, training gaps in implant placement. Now, finally, the article goes on to uh, point out the lack of mandatory implant training for general dentists. Uh, only one state, for example, Oregon, requires some type of a hands-on training, which raises concerns about the quality of care that patients are receiving nationwide. Now, these issues all highlight some major ethical, financial, as well as professional challenges within our field. And I think that it's really essential that we address them openly here. Today, inspired by the article and also my own commitment to saving natural teeth, so let's break down some of these factors and also discuss why preserving natural teeth should remain central to our practice, the implant trend, and patient experiences. Now, stats are showing that more patients are now opting for implants over traditional treatments like root canal therapy. Uh, so the question is why? Now, a lot of this is this shift is really due to the powerful marketing of implants as more durable and efficient solutions. And this messaging, however, often ignores the value of natural teeth. In posterior region, for example, uh, and especially implant placements can be technically easier for many dentists than performing a complex root canal procedure. Additionally, once the fixture is in place, restoring multiple implants with prefabricated abutments can sometimes be faster and a lot simpler and more efficient again than the traditional multiple crown preparation. Meanwhile, implants also come with a higher price tag as well as potentially a greater profit margin compared to root canal therapy procedures. And as Charlie Munger once said, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcomes. Now, human nature obviously favors higher reward decisions, so it's really no surprise that we're seeing an increase in implant recommendations in specific sectors of our profession and our industry. But as the article highlights through stories like that of Becky Carroll's in the article, uh, implant complications are real and can lead to pain and additional surgeries. Now, while implants are transformative for missing or unsalvageable teeth, in fact, great treatment options for most patients, we should really carefully consider whether they are the right choice for replacing salvageable teeth, shifting away from preservation for profit. Now, as dentists, we've all spent over a century promoting the value of saving natural teeth, and for good reason. But with the rise of what I refer to as the dental industrial complex, largely driven by uh, private equity, also seen a shift in some sectors towards viewing dentistry as a business first and healthcare second. 
Since 2008, financial regulations in this country have funneled more money into private equity, resulting in the wholesale acquisition of dental practices. This shift has turned many private practices into corporate-led businesses that require profits to trickle up the corporate chain as a matter of priority. Implants, unfortunately, have been at the forefront of this transformation, and corporate systems rely on profit, and not necessarily for a bad thing, but when profit becomes the primary motivator, patient care can suffer. Implants may be quicker and easier for dentists to place than complex root canals, but as a healthcare professional, our guiding principle should always be the patient's well-being, not personal expediency the importance of preserving natural dentition. Now, our natural teeth have intrinsic biological value. No artificial material can fully replicate the structure and function of real teeth. Removing a tooth and replacing it with an implant might seem simpler, but it disregards the value of our own tissues. Now imagine if we uh, kind of started replacing other body parts simply because artificial options were easier to manage. Would you replace a finger, for example, that, would, that could potentially be saved? I mean, maybe a pinky or something? Let's also remember that implants lack an intact periodontal ligament, a natural shock absorber that distributes occlusal forces across teeth. Because of this, implants often take more force than natural teeth, which can strain adjacent teeth over time. Implants are an incredible option compared to bridges or dentures, but they are not superior or substitutes for a natural tooth. Implants and complications, the truth about perimplantitis. Now, it is important to assess the risks associated with treatment options. A major issue, for example, is periimplantitis, which is a chronic infection around the implant that is somewhat similar to periodontitis, as well as apical periodontitis in natural teeth. Based on Deke's study back in 2018, this was present in 40% of the implants in patients' jaws. Here's where it gets tricky. In endodontics, we consider apical periodontitis a failure, but periimplantitis is often still considered a success simply because the implant is retained. This double standard can skew perceptions of success across these two different treatment options. Another trend we see is ceramic implants being marketed and recommended as metal-free alternatives to titanium implants to patients that are more on the holistic side. And these so-called holistic dentists use this term in a misleading way uh, since ceramics obviously contain zirconium, which is a white metal. So white ceramic implants may appear white because of the white metal. It's not because they are non-metallic or, um, or metal-free in composition. So I don't have a problem with titanium and consider it actually safe uh, and great for use as implants, but patients should not be misinformed about these non-metallic ceramic implants under the guise of holistic dentistry. Dentistry as a delay of the inevitable. Ultimately, all of dentistry is really postponing the inevitable loss of teeth, just as all of healthcare extends life without actually preventing death. Implants, despite their promise, are not permanent solutions. They also require maintenance, uh, may lose bone support, and then can fail over time and may have to be replaced. Preserving natural teeth for as long as possible should always be our primary goal until they fail and have to be replaced with their artificial counterparts. In orthopedic medicine, for example, doctors advise patients to delay hip replacement until it's absolutely necessary. As each replacement has a limited lifespan, and the later you get the actual, you know, artificial option, the better off you are since it will have a lesser chance of replacement. Now, the same logic obviously applies for dental implants. The longer we can preserve a natural tooth, the better the long-term outcomes for our patients. Economic incentives and ethical responsibilities. Now, when I travel to conferences, I notice a striking difference in the number of implant-focused presentations versus endodontic presentations uh, across the globe, everywhere that I go. Now, in recent conferences, for example, that I went to, implant lecturers outnumbered the endodontic ones by a factor of 10 to 1. And this shift is really further amplified by the fact that implants are often compensated at multiples of root canal therapy procedures across the globe as well. 
Given this disparity, it is really no wonder that corporations are capitalizing on implant dentistry. Now, don't get me wrong. Root canals also are too expensive in some locations, and also there is a trend for, of, of selling more expensive tools and gadgets to providers, which can potentially rise the cost of these procedures and creating even more pressure on access to care for those people who really care to save their teeth. So I'm definitely not happy about this trend on the endodontics side either, but that's really the subject of a whole other video, which I will definitely make at some point. In the meantime, in my opinion, any treatment planning that recommends removal of multiple teeth in the mouth should really seek the uh, input of an endodontist as well as a periodontist who are experts in saving teeth in order to assess the risk and potential for saving such teeth by assessing salvageability through conventional means. The American Association of Endodontists has already published a statement emphasizing its dedication to saving teeth and in response to the CBS expose article, if you will. So even though implants are more profitable and possibly even more convenient for the operator than saving a tooth, we are all part of a profession dedicated to patient health. And we need to focus on improving our skills guided by empathy and clinical experience and prioritize our patient's health over profit. These were the noble origins of this field. Conclusion. At the end, let me just say that preserving the natural dentition holds undeniable value. There is intrinsic value in what is natural, what is our own. So at least until we're you know, turned into what uh, the historian Noah Harari called the homo deus, which is a mixture of humans and gods as we will inevitably merge with our technology, we should really stay human for as long as possible. Implants are an incredible solution for cases where teeth cannot be saved, but they should never be the first choice when a tooth has a decent chance of survival. Let's honor our commitment to patients' care by ensuring that our treatment decisions are rooted in ethics, clinical expertise, and patients' well-being rather than convenience or profit. I will continue to remind my colleagues about the value of saving teeth. Meanwhile, we should collectively work together to develop scientific and transparent guidelines that can replace the current subjective way by which we assess salvageability of a compromised tooth and be able to communicate that in a scientific manner, an evidence-based manner about the treatment planning of our patients. This requires really a group effort to do that. Anyway, thank you guys all for watching. If you have any thoughts or questions on this topic, let's just uh, keep the conversation going in the comments below. In the meantime, I'm Ali Nese, and until next time, let's save some people.